Welcome to Mastering Go Programming by Pack Publishing. This is a video course that will take you into a deep dive into the Go programming language. We will explore not only Go's fundamental principles, but we will also dive into advanced features and very practical use cases. My name is Mina Andraus, and I'll be the instructor for this course. I am an experienced software engineer with very strong passion for all aspects of software. I enjoy designing software, writing software, and even deploying software. I blog and author articles regularly in my website, which is minaandrawis.com. In there, I write about all sorts of things, but my main focus is software design and development. So take a moment to have a look. I also have a GitHub account where I share open source projects. I have also worked with Go quite a bit in professional projects as well as personal projects. Go is a very powerful and efficient language to use. I had the privilege of writing Go applications with varying degrees of complexity, from the simplest applications to the most complex. Throughout this course, we will build piece by piece a software system that will act as a backend of a spaceship from the future. The spaceship is called the Hydra. Now, it's time to take a tour to discover the topics that we will be covering throughout the journey of this course. We will begin by an introduction to the Go language. So we assume that you have some programming or scripting experience. We will start by reviewing important concepts when it comes to the Go language. Uh, we'll discuss the development environments that could be used to develop Go, and we will discuss some important resources for learning and exploring Go. We will conclude this section by undertaking a non-trivial programming exercise. We will build a REST API client to consume a RESTful API service. In the second section, we will discuss the key building blocks of the Goa language. In there, we will explore data types and common data structures in the Go language. We will explore how packages are organized and how to write efficient Go code. This section will include two fun exercises. In one of them, we will write a binary search algorithm in the Go language using recursion and iteration. We will also explore how to create a custom set type in the Go language. Next, we'll start diving deep into advanced concepts in the Go language. In this section, we will start to explore concurrency, which is one of the most powerful features in the Go language. We will learn how to capture error and do troubleshooting, and we will learn some tricks that we can use when writing our code. This section will include two practical code exercises. We will write a linked list data structure in the Go language, and we will also write a web server. And we will witness how fluid it is to write modern software in the Go language. Now in section four, we will begin to discuss some advanced design concepts by talking about object-oriented design patterns. Object-oriented design patterns apply to any programming language. For us, we will get to see how to implement it in Go. This section 
we'll go through some of the most popular and most common object-oriented design patterns, like the factory pattern, the singleton pattern, and the builder pattern. We will also take a deep look into interfaces and methods in the Go language, which are key pillars needed to write Go code that can adhere to object-oriented patterns. Now moving to section 5, we will take it up a notch and discuss some fairly advanced design patterns in the Go language. Those design patterns will reveal to us the best ways to write concurrent software in the Go language. In the same section, we will also discuss Go reflection, which is a very advanced topic showing us how Go can inspect its own code and deduct the data types as well as the different properties of Go objects. This section will have a very powerful programming exercise where we will write a chat system using the Go language. This chat system will allow multiple people to send messages via a chat room. Next, we'll explore unit testing and benchmarking in the Go language. This is where we will discover the tools and the packages that Go provides for us to be able to test and examine our software. Next, we will talk a little bit about files, where we will not only cover how Go handles reading and writing to files, but we will also cover some very popular file formats in modern software. This includes JSON, XML, and CSV file formats. Next, we will talk about databases. This section will be rich with knowledge about how to write Go code that can connect and work to different databases. We will discuss a NoSQL database like MongoDB, which is a very popular database now in modern software. We will also discuss MySQL, which is also an extremely popular relational database. And we will also discuss BoltDB, which is a key value store written in Go. Next, we will move to discuss software communication topics which include TCP servers, TCP clients, as well as UDP servers and clients. From there, we will cover a key concept in modern software microservices, which is a concept of protocol buffers. Protocol buffers are basically a software layer that is used for data serialization and is typically used by microservices to serialize their messages when they communicate. So we'll cover how to implement it in Go and witness its efficiency. We will conclude this powerful mastering course by discussing web applications. This course will cover web applications in much deeper detail than is typically covered. So we'll discuss RESTful APIs and we'll see how to write Go RESTful APIs in an efficient manner. We will see how to use our RESTful APIs to build more inclusive web applications that support static HTML and CSS code. And we will then discuss how to write Go software that can handle HTTP forms and HTTP cookies. We'll use that to show how you can retain the information of a logged in user at your web application. We will also discuss web sockets and showcase how you can use it efficiently to stream real time data on your website. We will then dive into web security where we will discuss not only how to encrypt and secure the HTTP protocol, 
but we will also discuss how to secure the WebSockets protocol as well as how to encrypt user passwords by hashing them and then retrieving them later to verify the credentials of the users of your web applications when they attempt to log in again. By the end of this course, you will have more than enough tools and knowledge to build scalable, production-ready software applications in the Go language. This is because this course does not only cover advanced fundamentals in the Go language, but it also covers how Go interacts with the outside world. We will cover very practical, useful, and fun topics. Then in the last section, when we start covering how to write full websites in Go, we will build a web portal for the spaceship that will expose most of the functionality that we built over this course. The Hydra web portal main page looks like this, where we are welcomed to the Hydra portal. Perfect. Can't wait to show you how to build it.